Hey guys, welcome back. Robin Rosada here. Today we're going to talk about how we can really compress that ball at impact, create that shaftling like you guys always want, and how to hit the ball a little bit further. So let's get started talking about that. I'm pretty excited to talk about this video. Okay guys, so like I said, I'm pretty excited. And the reason why is because I had one of my lessons who comes into me regularly who struggles actually flipping the club at impact. What she's doing is her misses are a little bit thin and actually sometimes she leaves the face open a little bit and that goes out to the right. So maybe that's you. Maybe you're catching a little bit thin or chunky and you're leaving the club face wide open and the ball's going out to the right or you're swinging it and slicing it. So this is gonna be really good for you. How we can create that impact, that shaft lane and compress the ball really well. So let's go ahead and dive into her swing here. So she's got everything working really well for her. She plays great golf. She's on the varsity team in high school and she has a good full turn. If you look right here, now she starts her downswing. She's able to create some decent lag. So now right before impact to where her hands are getting close to her right thigh, you will notice that she's starting to lose a little bit of that lag. She's, her hands aren't really traveling ahead of that club anymore. And now she's starting to flip at it a little bit. So you can see that right here and then onto impact. We notice that she doesn't have any shaft lane and she's, she's kind of flipping at the club just a little bit. So that's why sometimes she catches a little bit chunky, thin, and leaves the club face out to the right. So we're going to discuss here what she did, some drills that we did to work on, how we can help, you help, we can help her create that shaft lane and compress the ball really well at impact. Okay, yeah, so as we saw in the video, she was struggling right around here, starting to throw the club out a little bit. So we're going to discuss for her the reason why that was happening. She was actually not allowing that left hip to kind of get out of the way and her shoulders had to open up. So was, her hips were stopping and then she had to square the club face up at some point. So then the reason why she was catching it thin, if you look at the impact, kind of coming up her toes so she doesn't catch it chunky or she was staying down level and then hitting it the ground beforehand and then leaving the club face wide open. So how do we get rid of this motion? Well, a few drills here. We focused a lot on what our hands were doing, but she actually had a decent amount of rotation, but we worked on getting a little bit more. Not much more, just a little bit more. But the biggest thing that really worked well for you, and I'll show you the video here in a second, was she actually worked a lot on her hands. How she can get her left hand to turn under and her right hand to cover the ball a little bit more. We talk about that a bunch. So let me go ahead and dive into it and dive into what our left hand is doing and her right hand was doing. This one worked really well for her. So then she actually, but the video I want to show you, she was compressing the ball really well. All right, so how are we working these left, this left hand and our right hand? So as we're coming down into it, one thing that we worked really hard on was trying to get this back, this logo or our glove to turn towards that golf ball. You can see it's starting to square up that club face a little bit. But we'll notice as I start to bow out that left wrist, you see the logo of my glove is starting to face that golf ball. If I try to do that, again, you're not gonna get all the way to where it's pointing down at the ball. That's not gonna be, but the idea is you're trying to get to that point. So we're trying to turn that left wrist, that left hand towards that golf ball. You'll notice how my hit left arm is leading that club head. So we actually did a lot with just one hand only, especially your left hand, focusing on that left wrist all the way through impact going really slow motion here. So notice that my left wrist is pretty bowed out. My hands are leading the club head. Now with the right hand, talked about extension. We mentioned that a bunch in all of our videos, how we can cover the ball better. So with the right hand, as we're coming down into it, feeling that motion as if I'm petting the grass in my right hand, my palm is facing down the ground, and I'm actually gonna try to catch the golf ball. So coming down, and trying to catch it. So really this extension where my knuckles are getting closer to the forearm coming into it. So now you're gonna partner the two. So with our left wrist bowing out, my right hand creating extension, you'll see that the club face is now turning, starting to square up. And then at impact, actually what's happening is our club face is actually de-lofted. PJ Tour players on average de-loft their club 30% of what the actual loft is on that club. So that's allowing them to create ball speed but compress the ball very well. So those are the two main things that we worked on in her swing to really focus on that. All right, so now let's go and take a look at her after video. This is with her driver now. So we'll notice that she's coming down into the golf ball. So her hands are really leading about to her same point where she was starting to flip the club before. We'll notice that her hands are really leading the club head now. Now if you take it on the impact, we'll see that her left wrist is pretty bowed out and that club head was trailing behind those hands. So that gave her to a really good impact position. Actually, she was compression it, compressing the ball really well creating a whole bunch of distance much more distance all right so now let's go and take a look i got another drill for you that she worked on worked on as well so we're gonna go ahead and grab your seven iron we're gonna, we're gonna take our normal golf stance with our ball position and i actually want you to de loft the club club a lot so almost like you're taking the club and turn into a putter loft so you're coming into it here and then one thing i want you to do is try to make that ball roll on the ground 
I'm gonna try to show you that again. We're gonna de-loft the club. This is a seven iron now, so it has a little bit of loft on it. Get our hands ahead, like we would be at impact. See my hips are slightly more open. The club is almost like at a putter loft here. I'm gonna let it roll. The one thing you don't wanna do with this drill is you don't, want to, you don't want the ball to come up in the air at all, like you're trying to help it up. That means you're flipping at it. If that ball is getting any kind of air time, that means you're kind of coming into it and flipping at it. We really want that ball to go here and roll. You're gonna extend on down. That's, that's ensuring that not only are you de-lofting the club, but you're keeping your hands ahead of the golf club as well. All right, guys, so good luck working on that. It's gonna be really fun for you. Have fun on it, play well as always, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Hey guys, I hope you really enjoyed that video talking about how we can really compress the ball right at impact, but now we need to know how we're gonna release it. So it's great to have all this shaft land and impact, but how are you gonna let all that release? Well, our founder, Clay Ballard, is gonna talk about that here in a second. It's gonna be a preview of our straight line release video, but it's important you click on that i-card, but it's gonna take you to the full version of it. It's really gonna get a good idea how you can release the club after you've created all this compression right down at the golf ball. You know, a common misconception I see is that we wanna create lag and we just wanna hold that lag all the way on through contact and get as much lag as we can coming through contact. And that's simply not true. In the release section, we're gonna talk about how to turn that lag into energy, how to turn that into speed so that you can hit it very far and do it like we mentioned without hardly any effort at all. And as we're coming through contact, we're gonna fully release this angle as we're about 45 past contact. So if I draw you know, a 45 degree angle, I should be looking at both arms, nice and straight, the club splitting those arms. So that by releasing the club, by getting this angle to release as we're coming through contact, that's what's gonna create the speed. Our hands are moving a very short distance, our club is moving a very long distance through contact, and it creates that whip-like effect. Very different swings hitting the exact same position. So first, let's take a look at Dustin Johnson releasing the club 45 past. And the reason we're gonna see such similar or such different swings producing similar positions is that this is the real physics of how this has to happen. Here we're looking at Sergio Garcia. Again, we're gonna to see tons of